Okay, so now we're going to take a look at using the tracker program itself. I've got it opened up here. I haven't done anything else, so this is me just opening it. And so what I'm going to do is one of the first things that I'll need to do is try and in bring in import my data. So I'm going to go to file up at the upper left. I'm going to go down to import and video. Now I'm going to go to, let's see, my desktop is where I've put these things. And then I'm going to go to, there's a folder called Freefall that I have all set up with videos very similar to ones that we were playing with in class. It gives me some information about the video itself. Frame duration, some frame durations differ from the mean by more than 20%. In other words, it's letting me know that there's some error in the video source that I've got. It may not be as uniform as we would normally like. Now, for the most part, this is the video I've got, so it's what I've got to go with. But it's something to keep track of when you go through and, and solve for things. It says for accurate velocities and accelerations, you should exclude these frames from the calculations by setting the start frame and end frame of the video clip. I'll show you how to do that. Um, they recommend that we start at frame one and end at 73. So we'll keep that in mind, but we'll see if we can get exactly what we want. So I'm gonna click okay. All right, so. Here's my video, and then I can go through and I can actually play it. This is me in the classroom. You can see that I've got a meter stick that I've propped up here with one of my C clamps, and I've got an object that is easy to see, this little red disc here, and then I am dropping it. So I hit play and I can watch it go, and that's my video. Now I've got a bunch of stuff at the end of this. You can see down here there's a little counter. It says 73. When I come back over here, oops, I'm going to drag this slider all the way back, back in time, frame zero. I can actually click on each one of these and I can go forward by one frame. See how it's ticking up over here? Eight, nine, ten. This is one of the things that we're actually going to be using. So right about here, 18, as I'm clicking through, maybe 17, yeah, 17. 16 might actually be when I'm letting go of it, though it can be really hard because I can't tell right now if I've let go of it or not. Although, now when I jump back to 15, 14, it's acting a little weird here. Okay, so I'm holding it here at eight. I'm gonna tick forward some. And it looks like by about 18, I'm actually dropping it. Maybe about, let's go with 16. 16 looks like my thumb is being pulled away from it. Now this is important, you're gonna to wanna to go through because you want to get very specific data from when you've got it actually falling. So let's go with 16 as our beginning, and then I'm gonna go through, it falls down, let's find our end frame. Looks like it's hitting the ground here in 32. So we've got something from 16 to, let's call it 31, because it looks like it's actually physically hit the ground there, and I wanna make certain that I don't throw off my numbers with it changing how it's moving. So I'm gonna click up here. Up here along the top, looks like the fifth button over, it says clip settings and it says start frame. I'm gonna change this one to 16. And then I'm gonna come down to end frame and I'm gonna go 31. That was the point of the stuff that I just did. Then I'm gonna click okay. See how it puts little arrows here? Now basically what it's done is it's only paying attention to this clip that I've laid out. And that's actually part of what the program was telling me at the beginning, that there were some odd frames in there that might give me some flawed data. From what it said, they happened much closer to the zero frame, probably the zero frame itself, and they recommended that I eliminate that. Well, I've eliminated more than that because there's other stuff that I don't care about. And so as you see, when I go through these, I can see the object falling and then my last frame there is right before it hits. Okay, so here's where we're going to need to set up some diagnostic stuff. So I'm gonna rewind it to the beginning of my section, right here to the beginning here, frame 16. And the first thing I'm gonna do, now that I've done my clip settings, I'm gonna to go to the next one over. This is calibration tools. Now this is gonna do a lot of the work for us, but we have to tell it what distances are. It doesn't know how far away I am from the camera. So that's why this meter stick is so important, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this up here, show, hide, or create calibration tools, and then it brings up new, because I don't have any calibration tools created yet. I'm going to go to new, calibration stick, 
and then it created a little blue thing here. What I want to do is I want to drag this one end to one side of the meter stick and the other end to the other side of the meter stick. And basically what this is doing is it's giving the program here a sense of scale. Now right now it says 100, 100 units, whatever our units might be. For us, in physics, we want to use SI and we're dealing with length, so I'm going to use meters. Well, the length that I've told it is actually 1.0 meters. So I'm going to tell it that it's 1. Okay. Now that I've got that, I can actually click this button again to hide it, but that doesn't mean it's gone. I can click the calibration tool and you see it comes back. I just click it to hide it to get, out of my, get it out of my way. Now the last thing that we need to do for this system to work effectively is we need to set up a coordinate system. Now that's something that we do a lot in problem solving and that's no change here. So that's our next button over here, show or hide the coordinate axes. What I do is I like to start at the very beginning of my video, at least the video that I'm going to use. I click this button and this is my coordinate axis. Now by default you can see there's a horizontal line, that's my x-axis, and there's a vertical line here that's my y-axis. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this where they cross. That's my origin. Well, I'm going to put my origin right here where my object starts. Now you'll notice there's another little vertical line right here on the x-axis and my cursor changes when I go over it. That's actually something where now I can change the orientation of my axis. Now to make my life much easier because I want all of my motion to happen in one dimension, one direction, I'm going to now fast forward to the end because that little red disc is falling more or less in a straight line. It looks like it's pretty good but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to that little line here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to left click and hold and it turns into a little box. Now I can drag out, see, and I can twist my coordinate axis however I want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my coordinate axis the x-axis, just because it'll be the easiest to deal with, even though usually vertically we deal with y, and I'm going to bring this down as I'm dragging it, and I'm going to put it right on basically the end of my motion. And then I let go of the left click. So now I've got the origin where my object starts. It falls in a straight line right down this axis, and it ends here. So this should be setting it up where pretty much all of my motion is happening in one dimension, one direction. That's going to make it a little bit easier for us to deal with. Now it gives me information on how I've tilted my x-axis. You'll notice it says negative 90.5 from the horizontal. Remember how I said when we keep track of vectors we always measure them from the positive x-axis. In this case the horizontal to the right. So it's doing the same thing. But now I've got my coordinate system. That's all set and just like we saw with the scale bar which is still there I can hide my coordinate system so it's out of my way. Now I'm going to bring this back up I'm starting back at the very beginning. Awesome. We're almost done. Now the next button over. Create a new track. I'm going to click that. And let's go with point mass. That'll be simple enough. And it brings up a thing where it says track control mass A. And then it's got some stuff over here. Now, what you do is my cursor's regular as I come over the video here. What I want you to do is I want you to hold down shift and it turns to a little crosshair and I want you to select the middle of whatever it is you're tracking. In this case, it's the red disk. I'm still holding shift, and now I'm going to left click on the middle of that disk. Now I'll put a little zero there that's actually telling me, hey, it's got its first data point. And you'll notice it went from 16 now to 17. This is automatically taking me to the next frame. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold down shift. My original one disappears, but it's still there. And I'm gonna try and click here on the middle of my disk yet again. Now it's got a one. Now I've got two points. I'm going to keep doing this. Hold down shift. Click on the middle. And now you can see this thing's really starting to move. Remember it started from zero. So I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to click on the middle of it again. Now as it starts moving faster and faster, the video has a harder time keeping up with it. It's kind of blurry. This is one of the reasons why we want to use something that hopefully can be seen very easily. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to do my best to try and tell it where that disk is in each one. And it gets harder to, and harder to do as this thing gets faster and faster. You can see now it's really smearing out. That's because it's moving much faster. Just do your best on this, but keep in mind that that may also be part of your error. 
it turns out that I have now gone through 15 different frames and I've told it exactly where it is. And over here, by default, it's got a graph that it's actually been filling in. This is mass A, so the object that we're looking at, and this is T comma X. I would describe this as a position versus time graph. Here's the time that it actually gets from our video, and here's our position. Now it also is really good about giving me data down here, which is something that we're gonna use, okay? So one of the things that I'm gonna do though is I'm going to bring up on table. I can click here. I don't actually care about what's going on in the Y direction. You can see that it fluctuates a little bit, but it's pretty much a whole bunch of zero. That's because I set up my coordinate axis where everything worthwhile is happening should be in my X direction, which is a little strange. Usually we do vertical as Y, but this way it makes it look a little bit easier for me because I'm dealing only with positive numbers and I can just imagine it's moving in one dimension pretty easily. When I click this Y, I can make that column disappear. I don't actually want that data. It's mostly zero anyway. What I would like, however, is my velocity component. When you click this, the program's actually set where it will use the position and the time data to actually calculate what the velocity is during that period. Now, we've talked about this before. Basically, what we end up with here is an average velocity because you'll notice there isn't one here at the very beginning. It's because it takes this position minus that position divided by this time minus that time, or at least that's what it should be. I can double check that, but that would explain why we don't have ones on the outside edges because it needs two data points in order to make each one. Now, again, this is also our average speed during that period, and so it's something that may be a little bit off of the real value. That's okay. You can also come in here and we could have, I can click on the X for instance, and I could change this. Let's do the velocity. We just talked about that. This is my graph of my velocity data versus time. You can see that it's got pretty much a straight line here. That gives me some useful information about this. And we're gonna do some more with that. First, I'm gonna take it back to the position versus time. You'll notice it's a curvy line. That's because we actually have this accelerating. Okay, in short, you can see already, all I had to do was videotape this with my cell phone, and then I bring this video file in, load it directly in here, and I've got a bunch of mostly good data. Now, one of my problems may be, maybe I didn't click quite right on the puck, maybe it's hard to see here. We're gonna talk about ways that we can help get that a little more accurate, but this is still very good data for us to work with. Right now, I had something where I had to click through 15 individual frames. In the beginning, I'm gonna provide you all with this video or you'll have one very similar to it. I want you to go ahead and click each one because each one you click made each of these data points that we see here. I ended up with 15 data points. Those were the 15 clicks that I actually did. But there are some great things in this program that I'll show you here in a little while with some of the more complicated ones we deal with that's gonna make this much easier for, for you all. The final thing I'm gonna bring up is this. Now, when you've got it over here, you can actually go, you can left click in the time column and scroll all the way down, go down to the bottom right, hold down shift and left click again. I've actually, now I've highlighted all of these. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy collected cells. Let's do full precision. And then what I'm going to do, yay, Windows 8, Microsoft Excel. Here's Excel, a really old version of Excel. But when I bring it in here, I can then go paste, and this is actually all of my data. And now I've got all of those numbers that were generated by this program, and I can use Excel to do a bunch of math on them and recreate the graph over here, for instance, except I'll have more control over it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and save this, save as, and let's go with, uh, I'm gonna go to desktop. I was working in Freefall. And I'm going to go, let's call this 2015 um, free fall. And this is actually 30 FPS. And I'm going to put YT for YouTube because this is the file that I made with it. I may open this up here in a minute and give you another video on how we can get some more information on this. Okay, but we're going to stop there for now.